whoever's here, we're going to start now. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, it's going to be a pretty, pretty quick, and we'll let. Uh, if you have any questions, you can throw it into the chat uh, while we do this. So let's let's go over this very quickly. Basically, the idea of this uh, this little thing, this little event, is to go over the process of how we at um, the block the block by block and the mine. Uh, UN Habitat do our world building um, because we've done at this point 200 and uh, 200 plus projects um, where we've built the city um, that we are doing the projects in and we always start in the same process so we've sort of gone over this process and it's uh, it's been streamlined over the years new tools have sort of uh, made themselves available um, so first of all we're going to start with making sure that we we have a you in order to to do a lot of these things you need to have a modded version of minecraft um and there are a couple of ways to do this um and there are a couple of ways to mod your game if you're already familiar with um mods and modding minecraft this should be easy um if you're not so familiar don't worry we're going to make it as simple as possible and a lot of the tools and a lot of the uh, mods and links that I use um, you're going to have access to them after this this event I'll make them available to everyone so that you can all do what I'm about to do so basically the idea is we're going to start with modding Minecraft and uh, a lot of there are a couple of ways to do this um, I'm going to do this um, using fabric um, and you can do this with forge as well there are multiple ways to do this um, but forge and fabric are the, the main ways to do this for single-player Minecraft um, and so what I'll do is I'll come here and I'll sort of so you need in order to in order to install fabric and Minecraft they they're individual files and so what you'll need to do is you'll need to download these files specifically fabric for example is the um, one that I'm going to use we're going to open this up so the first first step is always installing once you have that it's installing Minecraft fabric so you'll go here and you'll find you'll get this file you'll sort of download fabric fabric installer and you execute it um, remember that you'll need to have Minecraft installed first um, and we'll get here so I'll go over this process using Minecraft version 1.20.4 this is the latest version of Minecraft um, the stable build um, we have used we used to do and we still do most of our building in 1.16 because a lot of our tools that are proprietary and that we use um, for specific uh, uh, additions and some of our mods and some of our um, specialized models are only available in that in that but I'm going to show you how you do it in 1.20.4 because this is the this is what most people will have I think this is it's more interesting so basically you'll just install you'll click this button and install and what you'll get is you'll find that when you open the ins the installer, you'll see Fabric Loader 1.20.4, and this is how you know you've already, you've made the correct uh, installation. Once you've done that, you'll need to add some mods, um, and the mods that we use most often are. World Edit and World Edit CUI. This is the core essentially of advanced building in Minecraft. World Edit is the premier um, build support tool that a lot of build teams, professional build teams, will use as well. Um, and there are two other things here that you'll need, particularly for Fabric. So the API and the mod menu which just makes it easy for you to see what mods you have. So once you've installed Fabric and you've located this, you 
will come in and you'll open you'll open your files you'll find where your mods are um, for and usually it's in here so in your mods menu uh, there's a folder specifically called it, uh, mods um, in Mac OS the, the folder structure is a little bit different um, but roughly translates to the same you still want to find the mods file in the Minecraft uh, uh, folder. Um, so basically, you'll just take where your mods are, and you'll drag, and you'll drop. Um, specifically, the Fabric API. This is important because a lot of mods require it in order to do what they're trying to do. Um, mod menu. Mod menu just lets you see what mods you have installed using Fabric. If you're using Forge, then you won't need a mod menu um, mod. World Edit CUI and World Edit Mod. The reason I'm using Fabric in 1.20.4 is because in Forge 1.20.4, uh, World Edit CUI is not available yet. They're working on it, but it's not available yet. So I'm showing how you do it in Fabric. So if you want to be able to use it immediately, uh, you don't have to wait for that. So basically drag, drop it, throw it in here, um, and that's it. You, you've got all of the mods that you need. Um, and you can basically just come back um, and play. Um, obviously, don't try and drag and drop uh, mods into your folder while you're playing the game. You, you need to, to exit and start again. So um, I'm just going to show you uh, load up and show you what that looks like with the mod menu. Um, and then we'll get to the, the actual sort of advanced building part of this, um, which is creating schematics and putting it into your into Minecraft and then um, scaling it properly so that it's one to one and so on. Okay. Loading into Mojang. So when you've loaded it properly, you'll see that at the bottom left here, it says Minecraft 1.20.4 fabric. Um, it may not say 58 mods, depends on how many mods you have. Um, Fabric loads a lot more mods for itself, so it counts quite a number of them. So this is what the mod menu is, and the mod menu is four. It basically just lets you see what mods you have, find the mods folder, go to the website, see if there are any issues. This is very simple, not very important. Um, where we've done that. Uh, I can close this for now. Um, and we'll get to the, the important part of this, which is, and you can follow along. Um, you can take the screenshots, obviously, if you want to, but I'm just gonna go through this so that it's, it's easy enough for you to understand. Okay, so first thing you need to do is obviously to choose a physical place. If you wanna build your own city in your own town is to, of course, find a place where you're gonna do that. Um, we recommend that it's somewhere that is within walking distance for you because of course the best uh, public spaces are within walking distance of you um, but of course if you want to choose a public space that is nicer or um, you think you could make um, you have some ideas for um, that could improve it, uh, make it uh, better for for you and for your family, for your community then Go, go right ahead. It doesn't have to be a city that you live in right now. It doesn't have to be a city that you're from. It just has to be a public space that you know uh, and that you're passionate about. So I'm going to choose um, a place that I am passionate about, um, which is Chiang Mai. This is my hometown. Um, I grew up here. My sister was born here. Um, I obviously won't show you where I live, but um, this is where I'm from. So what I'm going to do is I'm there are a couple of parks here, some interesting ones, some nice ones, but I'm going to choose one that is pretty central um, and pretty yeah. It's a nice park. Um, it doesn't follow all of the the principles of good open public space, um, but it's a it's a nice one. Um, it's called Nong Bok Hat Public Park. So basically you want to make sure that you're on satellite view because we're going to be using this satellite picture 
in order to take a take a screenshot and use that screenshot as the basis for our build. So what you do is you want to make sure that you've centered your yourself um, um, here. And you can do this again in Google Earth as well. You don't have to do this in Google Maps. Google Earth has some additional tools that are really cool uh, that make it easy uh, and fun. They, they have much, much clearer satellite view uh, views. So that is also quite good. Um, you can see that the clarity on this picture is slightly higher than Google Earth. Um, and this can make it easier for you when you're trying to figure out later when you're in Minecraft what is exactly what. Um, so the important thing, of course, is to know, first of all, how big this space is um, and to make a measurement so that you can later um, scale this so that it's about one to one. In Minecraft, uh, a cool thing that they've done is made sure that the measurement of a block is about one meter roughly so you can you can make a measurement um, and as long as it's one to one it's great so the best thing is to make sure that the streets and all the buildings depending on what you're going to use as sort of your guiding posts are roughly straight so i can straighten this road a little bit place a point down um, and find another point that is, it doesn't have to be um, exact, but it's better if it's a multiple of 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a multiple of 10, so 20 meters, drop another point, click done. Uh, let's get rid of that. Actually, well, it needs to be there. Um, 20 meters. Okay, so 20 meters, um, we know that this is about 20 meters. So when we take our screenshot, uh, just take the screenshot however you want, try to make sure you get as much of the, the space as you're going, you're planning to build. And uh, yeah, you can see that I've taken a screenshot. Now I've already I've already done this previously, so I'm going to go back uh, and find that. So you can see that I have a screenshot of the space. Um, I've done it in Google Maps and I've done it in Google Earth. Um, so we're going to go through this and I'm going to show you how you take that image and turn it into a schematic. Basically, a schematic is a file that Minecraft understands as a collection of blocks that you can put into the game. Um, and you can use these certain programs to turn images into pixel art um, using blocks in Minecraft. So this is how this works. So the first thing we need to do is check, you know, this image, it says that it's 20 meters here. And we need to find out how many pixels actually, or how many blocks um, that is going to be. So first thing we need to do is open Pixel Stacker. And Pixel Stacker is this great um, pixel art um, tool um, that uses Minecraft uh, blocks. So if I, like, this is the, the default image um, that you loads up with the game. And you can see now that if I zoom in, this is all Minecraft blocks. You can see wood here, and you can see some sand here. Um, so that's how it, it really works. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open, and we're going to open to the image that we want. Here's the image. So I know this is 20 meters. Um, First thing we need to do is maybe select the materials because in these programs, they let you use all these different materials. Um, and some of them can be really good if you want to use them. And some of them are a little bit hard to 
um, they get a little bit messy, right? So these ones get a little bit messy. Um, the best is to use the, those that are really sort of not too not too complex, like very solid colors. Um, this will make it easier for you to tell what's going on later that you know because they have high contrast. Um, so we're going to leave this at that, uh, and I'm going to run through this. Uh, run it, see how many blocks that is. Okay, well, this is what we have. Seems really nice, yeah. Nice high definition pixel art. But it looks a lot more than 20 blocks. So I'm going to do a very quick, uh, quick, quick math. Um, you can see up at the top it says X. Uh, 510 so this is uh, horizontal uh, measure it to over here this is 584 510 584 so that's about 70 block ish um, that's too big we're gonna have to scale this down and there are a couple ways to to figure out how to scale the image but I'm going to use a technique that we're pretty happy with uh, called the rule of three uh, I have a little sheet here that we'll make available later that makes it very easy to, to understand. So first thing we'll do is we'll sort of figure out exactly how many blocks that is. So equals 584 minus 510. This will give me 74 blocks. So it's 74 blocks. It should be 20 blocks. So how this works, essentially this rule of third, is it takes the goal or the number that you want, um, multiplies it by the percentage of the current number of blocks, and then divides by that number of blocks. And it'll roughly get you to what you want. Um, it's not super exact, um, so you might have to do this in a few steps, and we'll see how many steps it takes me. So we'll do 74. So I roughly have to reduce this by about 27%. Um, and you can do this in whatever image image uh, software that you use. Um, but I find that if you are on Windows, the easiest thing that you can use is just paint. Just plain old paint. So we'll open it with paint. And when you up here, you'll see resize. This makes it really easy. This is why paint, I like paint. Um, because you can resize by percentage. So we'll just take that percentage, 27. We need to reduce it to 27% of the original size. We'll click OK. All right. Yeah, looks like it's, uh, it's about right. We can hit Save. It'll have saved that. And we can go back to Pixel Stacker. Uh, and open that file again. Um, so now you can see that it's a little bit more crunchy. The, this image is a little bit more uh, bite-sized. And you can still barely see the the two icons. And this is always why I say put one of those markers next to something that is pretty big and easy to spot, like this uh, pin drop um, in in Google Maps, Google Earth. Because then you can easily find where it is. So we'll run it through again. So now it's in blocks. And we'll say, OK, I can still clearly see where those two points are. And we'll say 220 and 253. OK, so it's a little bit off. 220, 253. Let's go again into Excel, 220. What was it 253 minus 220? 33. So we're off about 13, 13 blocks. That's all right. We'll just go back in, hit 33, and it'll say, okay, well, you need to reduce it by about 60 to 61 percent. So we'll go back into paint, resize, tell it what do we need again? 60. 61, let's say, reduce it, 
save, go back to Pixel Stacker, open it again. This is a little bit harder to see, but it's just barely visible. So here, 132, 152, great. So it's 20, 20 blocks, perfect. This is exactly what we need now. This is the image that we're going to paste into Minecraft and we're going to use as our guide to, to start the building. Okay, now all we have to do is save this and be sure to save it as a schematic, right? Not a scam. Well, you can save it as a scam, um, but I would say save it as a schematic either will work, but this is better. Um, so name it whatever you want. So I'm going to name it step 3B. Save it. Perfect. All right. Now, here's the sort of important part. You need to take that schematic from wherever you've, wherever you've saved it. Um, and you need to find the folder um, where your Minecraft is. And you need to go and drop it into your world edit schematic folder. Um, this is how... World Edit will know what to paste and what to load. So where you can find that is it's always in config. You go into config, world edit, and you see the folder for schematics. So you can see I already dropped one in there, but I'm going to drop this one. Step 3B schematics, move it into here. So now you can see I have step 3B schematics. So we're done with this schematic part portion of the, the work. Um, you can close Paint, Excel, whatever you've used so far. Um, and go back into Minecraft. I'm going to quit and start it again just to make sure that it's loaded up properly in case it has any issues. Uh, should it really? I um, can't imagine that it would have. Uh, but we like to be prepared here at the UN Habitat. Um, remember, if you have any questions, you can always drop it into the um, the chat where uh, Teresa will be uh, there to answer, um, or at least throw it over to me because she's not a Minecraft expert. Um, so love you, Teresa. <laughs> okay. Opening up Minecraft again. Don't worry, I'm going to share all of these files and share all these folders um, so that if you want to, if you want to sort of follow along um, later, um, sort of replicate what I've done um, to know that you've done it properly, then I'll do that. Um, but I'm sure that you'll manage. So we've loaded in. We can we know that world edit and world edit cy are working, and we're going to open. And we're going to start a new world. We're going to paste this into a flat world. Um, if you've ever done builds in Minecraft before um, or big creative builds, you'll sort of know how to do this process. Make sure that it's in creative, that you have all access to all of the items. Um, put it on peaceful simply because you don't want any mobs um, and allow cheats. Make sure that cheats are on because this is how you fly, essentially. Let's name this after the park. Long Park Hard Park. World. Make it super flat. This is always super flat. Um, leave it at that. Um, Generate structures off so they don't. The game doesn't accidentally spawn a villagers um, village on where you want to put your schematic. Um, and some cool, some extra things that you can do that make it a little bit easier for yourself is to go into game rules, come down to world updates, and turn off advanced time of day, fire, vines, and weather. These things can sort of get in the way. Weather, not really, but it might rain when you're trying to get do a build, um, and it'll get dark because you know time passes and you don't really need that. So once everything's done, we'll just create a new world. Okay, 
So, flat world seems good. Exactly what we need. No cows and no chickens and no villages in sight. So, if you never used world edit before, you might be wondering how you get anything done. Oh, there are some cows over there, but that, that doesn't really matter. Um, simply, all of world edit's commands come from the double slash. You can see here, there's there's quite a few of them, um, and it's not really important to go through all of them at the moment. Um, you'll find out what they do if you're sort of interested and want to get into more advanced, advanced work. Um, really, all we need to know at the moment is a few. So we've loaded that schematic into the folder. Now we need to take it and say, schem, schematic load and then the name of the schematic that you however you named it so i went step b a i believe is that is that correct i can't remember i assume we'll have to see oh uh, no right step three that's right sorry i'm losing my mind a little step 3a that's why right, I need to load it <laughs> so I, uh, load step 3a loaded perfect we got there now all you need to do is stand wherever you want it um, and it really doesn't matter of course if you want to do it um, in the way that is you can stand sort of facing true north um, if that's important to you of course it's not really important that you do that um, and then you go schematic no actually you don't need to do that you just go paste ah, and there it goes it'll sort of come in eventually and there we go Here's our schematic in Minecraft. And you can see it sort of is a little bit chunky and maybe a little bit hard to tell what is what, but you can sort of see the outlines of what you've taken videos of, right? So you can see here's the road and in Minecraft you can sort of see, yeah, okay, here's the road it sort of follows along um, down at the bottom here. So now we get to building, and this is the sort of fun part um, of the process. Um, we won't spend too too long here, just to to make sure that you sort of understand a few of the basic tools of World Edit. Um, and if you already know a lot of those tools, um, great, perfect. Um, you're gonna you're gonna be well set up to start this um, challenge, but. I'll go through uh, some steps of how we sort of handle the building process. So we always start with roads and barriers. So features that sort of delineate or separate you, the public space that you are trying to work on and all the other public spaces and all the other spaces of the city. Um, and a great way to start with that is to yeah start with cities and to start with um, walls and barriers, um, like, uh, yeah, um, gates and so on. So we'll come over here. Let's see. It's not exact science. So you kind of have to, you're going to have to do this sort of on as you, as you sort of figure it out. Uh, I'm going to open my wand. Um, this is how you get everything done in world edit. Um, and we're going to start here. So left click to select position one. And World Edit works essentially by you selecting certain areas and space in Minecraft and then using a few commands to sort of do things with that space. You can sort of, um, and you can sort of see all the way at the end there, this little green box. Um, and that's World Edit CUI. Um, in play you can see here 
the red boxes now that show me what I've selected. Um, it's really useful, World Edit CUI, because you know exactly what's going on, what you're changing, what you're not changing. So for example, I think, oh shoot, I, I kind of want to, to have more selected. I'm going to expand this selection by 10 going up. See, now I have a much bigger selection. Um, obviously, I don't need to do that, so I'm going to undo. Uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> you can't undo that. Um, so I'm going to have to paste that again. Uh, so you, uh, that's what you get uh, for forgetting. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're just going to start that again. Um, now we are recording this in case you wanted to uh, watch this later um, or, for example, uh, take a clip of that and then post that on social media and make a fool of me, which is also okay. Um, I give you full permission. Okay, so we're going to start uh, by basically... Uh, yeah, so the road starts over there. It sort of goes in a little bit of a diagonal. Very slight diagonal. And we're going to say, okay, let's make the sides of the roads. Um, and we're going to say set. And this is how you do a lot of the changes and how you build a lot of the areas. You say, okay, set this area that I've set. Uh, and particularly, if, because we're doing uh, the road, we're going to do line, actually. Um, I'm going to say cobblestone, because, no, we're going to say stone, because stone is simple. Line made out of stone. Decel to get rid of that. And you can see the, the sort of line now going through. <coughs> do that for the other side of the road. Uh, let's say it's about yeah, about here. Oh. Set first position. Always try to set first position and then second position, just to keep it in your mind, straight in your mind. Uh, okay, there we go. Line stop. There we go. So now we sort of have where our road is. Um, and we can start to build out those positions. Um, I'm going to do it just very quickly. We're not going to go into a lot of the other sort of major components um, of this. I'm going to say, OK, replace. Um, I don't want to replace anything that is stone. And uh, let's do stone slab. So now you can see I've carved out a space that is uh, stone. And you can see sort of where we're going to, where we're start, how we're starting to sort of define where the road is. Um, and once you've done these sort of major major delineation and places that you can sort of uh, tell very quickly, you can start to then build out parts of um, your park. And once you've sort of built out the park, and don't re remember that Google Earth is sort of your friend in this case, um, and Google Maps is also your friend, because you can sort of drop this guy into places along that park, in that park, and you can say, okay, um, oh, he's a little bit off. He's just outside the park, you can see here. Um, but you can sort of see what the, what's going on. Let's go in. We want to go here. Thank goodness to all the people who do do take photospheres because this makes this really easy. So you can now see a little bit of the park. Okay, where am I in the park? Okay, I'm on this path here. That's sort of roughly over here. 
on the map. And you can take space. Don't be too exact about this. Um, it doesn't really help you. Um, and you'll sort of figure it out as you go along. Um, and you'll you'll build it out. And if it ch anything is off, you can... Um, I'm going to do black concrete. Because you can tell that yeah, the road is a little bit... Yeah, it's a bit darker. Um, but then there's also, yeah, white white line on the side of it. Um, so we can quickly do that by going, taking, selecting that, and then saying, like I said before, replace. And replace basically takes all the blocks that it's selected, and it replaces that with something else. You can do set, and set does the same thing. Um, but replace has a cool function where it allows you to apply masks. And masks let you um, select different blocks um, specifically or not select certain blocks, which is uh, part what I'm going to do. So the exclamation mark says don't select this. So black concrete and replace it with white wool. I've got sort of the beginnings of a path. Just roughly next to this big lake. And so on. So I'm not going to go too far into this because this is sort of the, the nuts and bolts of doing the building. Um, but this is essentially the process for going from an image of a public space um, using a bird's eye view um, and using it to to give yourself an outline much like uh, artists will give themselves an outline for uh, starting to do um, line art and other things um, so it's really useful we use it a lot in our work um, so yeah I want to thank you for for coming uh, I want to thank you for listening um, feel free to leave any questions uh, me and Teresa will be here um, yeah Go ahead, if you have any questions, um, you can put up your hand, uh, request to speak, and so on. But if not, um, yeah, thanks for coming. I'm going to leave this chat open and this event open for the next uh, 5 to 10 minutes, if there are no questions. Um, I'm just going to putter away in Minecraft. Um, yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, and thanks, Teresa, for helping out. Uh, I didn't mean what I said earlier.